welcome to the uh, to the introduction to Linux. Uh, my name's JR, and I'm a, I've been a longtime Linux user, mostly as a web administrator, but uh, but I'm not an expert. Um, I have enough to share and help people to get started. And uh, Linux is a really exciting world. Um, you can repurpose old computers to run Linux boxes and do all sorts of things. It's the operating system that runs on Raspberry Pi and lots of other uh, lots of other smaller devices. In fact, Linux is all over the world in uh, all sorts of things, from toaster ovens to uh, you know spaceships. So it's a it's a fundamental tool. And what we're going to talk about mostly is the command line, uh, because the command line is the unifying. Uh, interface when you're talking with the many different types of uh, Linux distributions and and so on. But um, I've got two folks. We might be joined by more as we go along. Uh, I'd like to get a sense from each of you as to why you are interested in learning Linux, specifically on the terminal. Uh, maybe I'll go and ask that of Rich first. OK, well. Um... The main computer on our uh, radio bench at uh, Maycaven is a Ubuntu Linux machine. And I have um, a number of different needs to be able to manipulate the system, use the system effectively, making um, uh, memory chips to put into the uh, Raspberry Pi systems and and just a whole bunch of loading programs on the machine that we want to use to service to radios, things like that. And also I'm very interested in it from the point of view of um, the um, Python programming language and the Raspberry Pi and the fact that our Raspberry Pi systems are running, uh, I guess, Raspbian. That is a version of Linux, right? That is correct. So uh, you have a bunch of things, and it sounds like you have some experience uh, noodling or learning uh, on a practical level how to operate these things. Fumbling, I would call it. <laughs> yeah, that's normal. That's the standard path. Uh, Brenda, uh, we seem not to have a direct view of you, but uh, would you want to have to get up, sit? Do you want to respond with uh, what interests you in this? Oh, yeah, well, same as Rich. I mean, we're working on the same kind of things, and I had very little experience with, with Linux, and I have a little bit, but I certainly can use a, a refresher. And meanwhile, I'm trying to get on, let's find a domain name for your business. Where do I put it? Uh, I think you're in the wrong place, because there shouldn't be anything about domain names. You think what? Uh, but I, I don't know. There's, there's nothing to do with this class has anything to do with domain names. So you so may be in the wrong space. Well, I'll, I'll walk through, let me, um, let's jump into that. So there, there are two uh, things that you may need. If you want to follow along, you can go to makehaven.org uh, slash Linux is where I have a document posted. Uh, you don't need this document in front of you, but it is uh, available so that you can see all of the commands uh, you can copy and paste things if that is useful to you. That's makehaven.org slash Linux, L-I-N-U-X. That should bring you to a Word document. Not a Word document, but a Google document. Uh, the second is we're going to be doing some, uh, I'll talk for a little bit and show you some examples. And then we'll have you guys try it yourselves. We're going to use a uh, emulator that's a web-based emulator called code uh, code from anywhere. So uh, that is, or it's just code anywhere. C-O-D-E-A-N-Y-W-H-E-R-E. -E. So code anywhere is where you're going to want to log in. OK, um, I have the document. You put in chat something to click on. So I clicked on it, and all this stuff that you wrote and, and Linux stuff appeared on the screen. Is that the only thing I need, or, or which one? No, that oh, document no. is just background information for your reference in the future. Those are my notes that I'm going to use to do the lecture. OK, that's nothing to do with either of these other two things. The, yes, Code From Anywhere is a piece of software 
that allows you to see a Linux terminal without having to install your own terminal on your own computer. Okay. It Can allows you to access a remote computer. Brendan, just open up a new page in Chrome and search for Chrome. I mean, uh, what is it? Something from anywhere. It's Linux. code anywhere. It's, code uh, anywhere. It's, Go to that in page the chat. Yeah. In your, within Chrome. Go to that page and then fill out the and get started on it. It's quite intuitive to go forward from there. So, okay. Also, uh, move your chair over to your right by a foot. So, uh, Brenda, did you want to share uh, what interested you in this learning? Oh, well, because I think it'll be useful for all kinds of different things I might be doing in the future at Make Haven and everywhere else. And uh, I'm doing all the th same things Rich is doing and working with him, so I need to know about Linux. Yeah. Okay. So... Okay. What's I'm going to I'm going to jump into demonstrating some of what's there. Uh, so I'll share my screen and you don't have to uh, it's better to pay attention now and worry about getting finishing the sign up when uh, you are you know when, when we're done because I want you to be able to see what's happening. So don't don't get distracted trying to finish the sign up process now. Um, okay. So you should now be seeing a uh, a screen. Are you seeing a uh, a screen with a bunch of text on it? Yeah. How did you do that? <laughs> uh, it, that's not really. I'm just sharing a screen. So okay. Uh, all right. And. All right. So one thing just to consider is the uh, origin of Linux. So this comes from uh, an operating system in the you know in the mid '70s. Uh, there were a bunch of projects all segmented, and uh, there's a name Richard Stallman. Uh, he started a project called the GNU. Uh, this was to emulate uh, Unix systems that were out there at the time, and uh, functioned around a, a core unit called a kernel. Now what a kernel does is it, uh, it essentially talks between the lower level hardware. It is a translator between hardware and then the higher level software. Um, he was working on several components, including a file system uh, and uh, other pieces that attach to this kernel in order to make it a, uh, a functional complete system to compete with the uh, Unix uh, proprietary system that was out there. Uh, it was actually then uh, uh, the Linux was brought by a guy named Linus. Uh, he just plugged in the kernel portion of it, uh, leveraging the work that had already been done by Richard Stallman and uh, was able to put out a complete version called uh, Linux. Uh, this is that, that core kernel is uh, developed and there's lots of different distributions that share that core piece uh, that is, is shared between them. So you have your hardware and then you have a kernel on top that's negotiating things. And then you have your, your general operating system uh, they they come in distributions. So one of the most common is Debian. So what Debian is is a collection of different other helper software that uh, is standardized. For example, how do you access and download uh, software? Well, Debian has what are called repositories, which are libraries that are online of all the types of software, and as a standard way of saying, go and get some additional software uh, for this system. And as a standard set of dependencies, so other software might depend on other software, Debian is one way of handling it. There are many different, uh, there's many different distributions out there. And then distributions can have different GUIs or graphical uh, interface systems. Uh, Genome or uh, Gnome, it's pronounced a couple of different ways, um, is 
one example of a graphical user interface that people can have. But the lower level is actually to use something called terminal, which is where you are typing into the system in order to do commands. This is generally preferred for a couple of reasons. One is that it has specificity. Like you can, you, you're typing things and you know what you're getting, where graphical interfaces can be arranged in a lot of different ways on a lot of different systems. Um, and there are some you know, constraints and awkwardness. Often the text terminal version will allow you to do functions that are not available in the GUI interface. Um, so it unites the experience that if you know how to use terminal, you can use it in a lot of different circumstances. Uh, and it allows you higher level functionality and is a on-ramp or introduction to scripting. Um, it can look like uh, those, those interfaces. Uh, some names you'll hear are Ubuntu, uh, Raspbian, which is what runs on, it's a stripped down version of Linux, which runs on uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, XFCE uh, is a type that runs on older computers. So if you're trying to get an old computer that has low specs running nice and snappy, you might grab that. Uh, Cinnamon is a uh, version that's very popular for its graphical interface. Uh, the uh, Ubuntu is probably the most popular. It's uh, run by a company called Canonical, which uh, they put the open source software out there, but they have various elements that they're selling as a for-profit company. But they've, defined, they've created a very uh, refined version of uh, distribution that a lot of people have enjoyed. They have two versions. They have a server-oriented version, and then they have a home usage-oriented <laughs> version uh, that you can install and uh, utilize on your, your computer. Uh, you can even install it to a thumb drive or USB drive and then uh, boot the whole operating system and test it without having to uh, install it to your hard drive. I have um, both done that using it from a USB drive but also have used it uh, on a disk partition so that when my computer starts up, it prompts me, do you want to load into Windows or do you want to load into Linux? And that's nice because it gives you two segregated operating systems operating on two different partitions of the, of the disk. Uh, so I'm going to, so typically when you're in, um, you'll also notice that Linux is underlying most Mac operating systems, or all Mac operating systems. Uh, so, and now with Windows, you can install uh, the Ubuntu subsystem. So this is essentially a uh, miniature version of Linux, which runs inside of a window, inside of, uh, inside of your Windows operating system, and allows Ooh. you to operate terminal and learn more about it. Um, so those are all uh, those are all parts of what you might uh, how you might intersect or use Linux in the future. Uh, I am going to walk through some of these commands and uh, give you an example of just your basic navigation and troubleshooting. Uh, then we'll, we'll turn over to the code anywhere, and I'll have you guys share your screens and make sure that you can follow along and uh, do it. Quick uh, question. Yes. So uh, do for uh, any of the uh, distributions of Linux to operate, must there always be a internet connection? So it, it's constantly getting stuff that it needs off the internet, or does it ever have everything it needs already, and you don't even have to have an internet connection, and it's going to work fine? Uh, it, it, they operate independently. So it's an independent operating system that runs on hardware. There's lots of non-connected versions of Linux doing all sorts of things. Um, the example we're using is running over the web, but that's not typical. So once you got it configured, you can, uh, and you load it on your computer, you can disconnect it from the internet. It's going to work just fine because the computer has everything it needs now. Yeah. Right, uh, yeah. And I see we are joined by uh, Robert. Robert, um, if you want, do you want to just uh, tell us what you're interested in and, and what any experience, if you had any previous experience with Linux, uh, what it was? Uh, not 
Not, can you hear me all right? I, I can, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I haven't much. I, my, I, my, I have a cousin who's very much into it, and he keeps telling me to do it. He, we installed it once on one of my machines, but um, yeah, uh, probably more broadly, um, I, I'm on a Mac, which is a flavor of Unix, and I occasionally use, uh, have to resort to using the terminal window uh, to do stuff. And uh, I'm I'm so inexperienced with Unix that um, I, I I'm very scared of it, and I only want to copy and paste the exact command so I don't wipe out my hard drive or something. I, sure. I'd like to be a little more conversant at least uh, with Unix, and and so at least for for that, even if I'm not using Linux per se. Um, yeah. So. Uh, thank you. That's great. I mean, yeah. that's a great place to be. So you've explored, but you're trying to get a little more foundation. Yeah. Um, the so what I'll do is I'm using uh, Code Anywhere, which is an online platform. Uh, you can see the uh, my screen shows you uh, a bunch of text. If you are comfortable and have been able to create uh, an account, uh, feel free to try and follow along. I'm going to run through a bunch of things uh, before we stop. And then uh, you can, well, make sure you have your code anywhere uh, thing running. And we will, uh, we will then help you troubleshoot. So what I've done is I just created a free account. Um, I'm talking to them right now. Actually, they might extend uh, free unlimited accounts to us since we're, we're doing some online teaching. Uh, so I'll be in touch if folks are interested in continuing to have access to these systems. What this is, is it's a container. So if you are creating, um, it, it, once you create your account, you'll be given an option for what sort of container you create. Uh, and so the container instance you're going to create, it will be followed by an option for what do you want. And this has pre-baked versions of Linux some that are more focused on development for, say, Ruby, some that are uh, focused on Python, some that are focused on web development. Uh, I just selected the Ubuntu 16 or something and uh, the you know generic boilerplate, nothing additional added. Um, you could select whatever one you want. Uh, things should generally work the same, but for simplicity, I just picked the one that had the, the least going on. Quick question. Yeah. So for those of us who have uh, Macintosh computers, we can then go into the terminal on our Mac and enter into uh, a Linux command line structure that we should be able to do these things there? Correct. So Mac has its subsystem is all Linux. They swapped over from a different kernel because Linux is where it's at. Windows is its own deal. Uh, so and if you're using the subsystem of uh, Ubuntu there, uh, it's sitting on top of a Linux or a, a Windows kernel. But with Mac, you are running Linux. It just has a different GUI interface. Mm. Um, and it may have different helping uh, modules installed. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, just because we are running, uh, I want to kind of respect time. So I'm yeah. going to keep, I'm going to push forward. Yeah. Um, so first of all, once you've logged into Terminal, you'll see what you have right here at the bottom. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that. In my case, my username is calbox on a system called test Ubuntu terminal. And the tilde is just like your home directory. So that indicates that is the home directory I'm working from. And I'm in a subdirectory called workspace. The dollar sign then says, uh, indicates where my type starts. One thing I can do is one of the most common commands is CD which is change directory. So change directory uh, dot dot. So the dots are indicating down directories. So dot should be your current directory and two dots is down a directory. Um, now I am now down at tilde. So I can use another common command, which is ls. That will list whatever is inside of the, um, inside of that directory. And I see in fact, uh, there is one thing in there, and that is called workspace. Um, the 
these commands, uh, you kind of have to get a sense of what they are, but it's very common to forget what these commands uh, do and how to change them. So there's a couple of uh, tools <laughs> that we have to be able to remind ourselves and learn uh, what's inside of the what's inside of the system. Uh, what one is what is, and I'll say what is ls, and so it's going to tell me ls. There's one record for it, and it lists directory contents. Well, that's not quite enough. So I'm going to go to the manual. The manual is built into most of these systems, and mm -hmm. so it's up by typing man, and then whatever command you want. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to type in man ls, and it comes up with this reader. Uh, it tells me that the synopsis is you type ls, and then any options, uh, and then any file that you're specifying. Um, so this lists information about files in a, uh, the current directory by default, uh, alphabetically, and then I can modify it with these. So for example, if I add the modifier dash a, flag a, it will not ignore entries starting with a dot. So basically, the convention is uh, to hide files, mm -hmm. you put a dot in front of them. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question there, someone? No. OK. Um, it is, if, if you're able to, uh, if there's going to be background noise, it's a good idea just to mute until you, you have a, a question, yeah. uh, just so I don't get confused. Um, so I can press Q to exit from that menu. Uh, and let's try the command. Let's see if there's anything else in this directory, ls-a. So in fact, there's a whole bunch of things that were hidden um, inside of this root directory. Because if I just go ls, we don't get the, uh, the full information. Now, your home directory is kind of a special directory that way. Uh, in that there's a lot of configuration files that are specific to your, uh, to your needs. Uh, for example, oh, let's, uh, let's take a look. Well, let's do one more modifier. Uh, another one is you can see detailed information about any directory that's there with the L. So I did dash L. Um, and if we wanted to see how that man ls, and I can scroll down, and do so right there. So small l, use the long listing format. Um, so those are all the modifiers for the ls command. Is that correct? Exactly. So each manual page for each thing. So if I did man uh, cd, which is change directory, there's no manual for CD. That's strange, but I, I'm not quite. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have to look at that later. Um, so yes, that's that's it exactly. Uh, LS. So I can say both L and A. Uh, so the long list and there, and so now we get the full listing of what is inside the directory and a whole bunch of information. Uh, it also uh, gives me the file size. Um, I like to put the file size in human format, which is H, uh, and that will give me in kilobytes rather than the just bytes above. So you, what happens is you start to learn the commands, and then you start to learn your favorite modifiers. So I'll type the I'll I'll type that same uh, you know L A H a lot uh, on when I'm trying to figure out what's inside of a directory. So let's sort of just look at the anatomy of what the file system is here. Um, well, does anybody want to hazard a guess or has had experience? So like, what are, what are we looking at with this second listing um, in front of us? Well, you got to see the, the, the number of bytes without uh, abbreviated into K bytes or M bytes mm -hmm. or whatever. But everything else seemed to be the same, right? Because you use yeah. the letter H. Yeah, so what, what you're seeing is that first column, uh, it is saying oh, which that. ones are, uh, so the D indicates a directory. 
And the way that Linux is broken up is there are uh, there's there's multiple levels of permission. So there's the you know what the system can do, what the uh, a group can do. So you can define a group, and they can uh, do things. What your user can do, what anonymous can do. So the the three levels of permission are broken up uh, and signified with these. Uh, in this case, this lettering. So there's a few different nomenclatures for uh, identifying who can edit something. So in, uh, in this case, uh, you see that it's a directory and it has, the, at the highest level, there's read, write, and execute. That's R, W, X. And then the next level, which is the group, has read and execute. And then there is the last level, which is read and execute, right? And then there's ownership. So there's a group ownership and an individual file ownership. So it was, uh, it's owned by, this one's owned by Calibox. So that indicates it was created um, by that uh, user, which must have been what was used to spin something up. Um, let's, uh, I'm gonna create something. Uh, I'll just create a text file uh, that's blank. Um, I'm gonna use, you know, Okay, so now I'm gonna run this list again. So touch just basically uh, touches the system and creates a file. Uh, so if I did it right, I should now have a zero kilobyte. Yep, there's a zero kilobyte file uh, created by Calibox. Okay, because my username is Calibox right now. It's not JR like it normally is. Um, and the, it's, there's read, write, access. Uh, to that, and it, you can see it as uh, text.txt. Um, All right, I have a quick question. Yeah. So that uh, those that access is um, like privileges. Is three different sets of privileges for three different kinds uh, groups of people. Uh, yeah, exactly. So the first one is the creator's access. Yeah, let me pull up a uh, like a graphic for to to describe it. Um, are, they, are these what we're calling permissions? Yes, these are permissions. Uh, so the first one is user, right? The second one is group, and no. the third one is other. Right? Okay. So other other being like so when you're you want to be careful about that last one when you're doing like web development. Um, I have uh, I will share because web development like if you share execute permission on that last one the other you can completely open your system to anyone on the web and that's how you know when websites get hacked that's one of the ways that people run arbitrary script. Um, and do all sorts of damage. So I'm gonna uh, share a window and uh, I will, sorry, just navigating a window right here, share. So this is a, uh, you see that chart? Oh, yeah. So that breaks down. I got it. So this is the way, the symbolic mode that it's represented. Um, then it's, that corresponds to a way it's stored in the system in binary. Got it. And then there's a numeric mode that Got uses it. one, uh, that uses different combinations of numbers in short form in order to define permissions. So each group has three flags represented by a one or a zero or when encoded by a, yeah. uh, a number. Yeah. Uh, and so I this, a lot of times when you have problems with the system or files, it is permissions. And one of the resolutions is to give a file additional permissions. So, but before that, uh, I think it's good to kind of demonstrate just navigating around. Um, so what do you guys think? If I wanted to go inside one of these directories, what would I, well, what would I do? And which directory do you want me to go into? Any, any of you can pick one. 
I'm not sure. Uh, right now, it's aimed at your current directory, right? Well, w yeah, right now I'm in tilde. You see that like right before the dollar sign has the tilde? I lost that. Yeah, at the very bottom of the screen. Hold it. It says the username at the machine name, and then there's a colon. I guess sure, I'm seeing, um, seeing your slide. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I shared the screen and didn't share it back. Yeah, let me. Okay. So let me just ask this one question. So in uh, Linux, um, Linux is always has what would be cons uh, called a current directory pointer. You're always in one directory or another, and if you want to move it around, you got to do it. You got to change it. Yeah, that's pr that's pretty much correct. So I am currently in a directory. You have a location that's indicated typically by your prompt. So I am at tilde, which is my home directory, and. Uh, so any, anyone can tell me what, give me a directory that well, you see here that you want me to go into. I'm just trying to keep it moving forward, but yeah, yeah what's the question? question? Yep. Here's a question. I mean, it's, it seems yeah. to me navigation this way is kind of like being a rat in a maze and you, you, you can get lost. Uh, yeah. you can go, I'm, now I don't know where I, is there a way to quickly go take me to the top directory so you can start from the top or? Uh, yeah, so there is um, the uh, CD, so this CD slash is always the root of everything. Okay. So this is uh, your system, and this is where your system files live, right? Um, yeah. And so you can go back here. There's nothing below it. Um, where we exist is in the tilde is a shortcut that gets to your user directory, uh, which right. is inside of home, because you're not typically going to modify these other uh, these other elements unless you are uh, installing yeah. software manually, those sorts of things. Right. I, um, I have a dumb question. Yeah. You keep referring to tilde. What am I looking at for a graphic? Yeah. Yeah. So a tilde is a squiggly line. So in the case of uh, your keyboard, you write the dollar signs? It's, it's on your keyboard. It's the one before the one. It is the symbol. If you look on your keyboard, there's a, the explanation point on the over the letter of the number one, right? Yeah. yeah. Before that, there's a different symbol. It looks like a squiggly line. That's a tilde. That's an uppercase. Symbol. Uppercase, yeah. And so, uh, is it is it coming? At, is is that a tilde or a dash that I see between after a terminal colon? That's tilde dollar sign. Tilde dollar sign, correct. Got it. Almost that, looks like a dash. So um, that's better. Yeah. So, so yep. What's the dollar and, sign mean? It's just your prompt for you to reply. Is that? Yeah, and so different systems may have different configure. This is configurable. What's in front of it? Mm -hmm. uh, this is just how Ubuntu appears. Uh, but yeah, the dollar sign is kind of a standard for uh, that's where you know to start typing. Right. Uh, it's ready to receive a command. Yeah. Um, so give me, let's, let's dig into the system. Tell me which one of these you want to go and check out. Well, let me ask you this question. So I see 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. Uh, designators there, and each one of those is a directory. When you say so, the blue, yeah, the blue thing. Well, so how would you know? So blue is a convention that's happening in Ubuntu. Uh, given what we just did before, where would how would we get more information about the these uh, these directories? Make sure they're directories. You can just list one and specify it, right? Well, so I well I listed, but what else could I do? What did, what did I just do earlier? Um. I did a I did a flag. You got to set the pointer, right? Well, no, I've got. To, I'm going to flag it with the L to get more information. And so here I've listed it, and you can see it has a D in front of it, and you have your permissions. So we know the D indicates directory. These are all directories owned by the root. Uh, and so those, those are the 19 subdirectories that were indicated in the previous. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm just I'm just yeah. listing it in different ways, and I, I could 
you remember how I could list if I wanted to find out if there were uh, hidden files or Ooh. hidden directories? Yeah. I'd add the A. A for all. Yep. And there's one. There's one dot V Z F I F O. So mm -hmm. most times, yep. Go ahead. And also hard link. So a lot of times directories are hidden for a good reason because the operating system uh, configuration files, they're configuration files that you don't want to edit but they sometimes they are useful to find. Robert, what, what did you have to say? Oh, no, I'm fine. Okay. Um, all right, so let's just give me an example of how I would go into one of these directories. So uh, if we want to go into user, uh, USR, how would I get in there? You got to set the pointer to user. How do I set the pointer? With um, the ls command? Nope, ls is for listing. CD, change CD. directory. CD. And, yep. And CD. then user. No oh, user. Right? That changes the pointer. Now you can do a list, right? Yep. So now I can LS inside of user. And inside of user, I have bin, games, include. Well, games sound fun. Let's, how do we get into games? So that's eight different subdirectories in user. Yep. How do but, and so games because we know in this case it's blue. We but could also one if you you uh, hidden away too. There could be more hidden away. Absolutely. So I would go ls, la. Uh, nope. There's there's no hidden directories there. Hmm. How about those top two? You know, with yeah. top, what's so that? For, I don't. It, it's like a. It's a system thing. I I, I don't Some kind of system quite know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a thing about the convention. I think technically, because uh, it's listing the way that things are linked and their connections, it, it's indicating that you can move up and down directories. So I think it's indicating position. How many um, how many text characters can be in a directory name? That I don't know. Okay. A lot. Okay. <laughs> Uh, did, was there any other questions? No. So, uh, so if I want to go and check out games, how do I get into games? You got to do a CD games. CD slash, yeah, or are going to CD space, and then here's a tip: if I'm typing, so especially with long directory names, uh, I don't have to type the whole thing. I can press tab and it will autocomplete as long as it's the only one with that letter in front. Got it. So I just yeah. hit tab and it autocompletes. Very useful for complex uh, typing. And I will hit enter. So now you can see my location on this terminal is user and games. And I'm going to ls it. There's That's nothing. I'm going to ls slash a. There's nothing in here. Um, hmm. Now, how do you think I get back to my home directory? Oh. Well, you're going to have to do a CD again. Yeah, CD or one. Secret way. Um, a minus one. <laughs> I, I can do CD tilde because that tilde. will take me to the tilde. The other thing is to go down any directory, I can do CD. So the single dot indicates the current directory that you're in, right? So if you're sending a command, so cd dot should actually just change my directory to the directory I'm in, which doesn't do anything. Right. right. So cd dot dot is to change the directory to one down. Question. Yep. If you were to visualize the directory, is the, is the root at the bottom of the trunk of the tree and everything is above it, or is the root on the top and everything is below it? So I think you, the roots on the. I mean, I guess it's that's kind of semantic how you visualize it, but uh, I, I would uh, I would consider the root at the bottom and the branches on top. That would be my visualization. So when you did dot dot, you went down down toward the trunk. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and yes, when I'm saying up and down. I am indicating that root is at the bottom. You're right. That that's right. a good uh, question. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I was thinking the other way. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, going up. Uh, yeah. I I don't know if that's so. I may be unconventional. Uh, well, there, there root, could, it probably I mean, could be used either the way. Root but, is generally at the bottom. Yeah, I would say the roots at the bottom. So cd uh, 
dot, dot goes down. Or I could also have been in games and gone CD tilde and gotten back to my home directory, okay. uh, which is normally where you're going to start. Um, and we've got workspace here. Uh, one common thing is to want to edit a file. This is like one of the most common actions. So it's, there's navigation. Uh, let me just, I guess, stop a second. And so does the idea of seeing directories and their characteristics going up directories and going down directories, does that, do you guys kind of feel like you got that? Yeah, I do have a quick question on that. Yeah. Um, it seems to me if you're going to be involved in your uh, system files, you really have to understand your hierarchical structure. And is there a way, uh, and maybe like in a simple system, is there a way to print out uh, a tree where you can see the root and you can see the various uh, subdirectories? Yeah, I mean, there's several online. There's visualization. It, there, there are there are also ways to just list the entire system. Uh, mm -hmm. It will be a very long list. So mm -hmm. generally you're targeting a very specific subdirectory and figuring out what's in there. And there's there's so many commands for how you can list and, and set up what you wanna see. Um, but I, I can't, um, I wanna, st I'm gonna stay focused on that because it, it's, uh, that's a whole world to get into. All right, one more question. So in any directory, you can have a system file, you can have a data file, and you can have an application file. Uh, yeah, I'd say, uh, and I'm not a computer scientist at this level, the difference between a uh, application file and a data file, there's not really a difference other than it has the execute flag on it. And the system then sends it to something to process. Uh, so I think at a core level, there's three types, and one I haven't even talked about is called a symbolic link. Uh, so there's directories, there are files, and files can be executable, and then there are these symbolic links, which symbolic links are way essentially shortcuts that get you to different parts of the system. And a lot of times you'll use that when you want to manage a configuration file outside in your own directory, but uh, you add that link into the main system um, because you don't, for various reasons, you don't want to leave it there uh, because it might be replaced by something else. Um, so, but what I want to do is I want to get the most fundamental things for you guys. So the most, one of the things you're going to use the most is once you've found things, sometimes you need to edit a thing. Uh, and so there's actually many ways to uh, edit on a, a terminal. Um, this is one of the kind of catches for newbies and people will argue about which method is best. Uh, I'm gonna show you one called Nano, which I think is the closest to a desktop experience um, okay. for, for people to start. So in order to do that, uh, let's, first go and make sure I know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go man, <laughs> nano. Uh, what do you think that's going to do, guys? It's going to look up nano in the manual. Yeah. Exact. What? Uh, no manual. <laughs> all right. So this is where I, I had went and tried some things in here. So does it have nano? Do you uh, need it? OK. I'm just going to try. So normally you do that. So it was going to tell me. Do nano text. Oh, there's no nano. All right. Now, now uh, this is, this is, so this happens. So uh, nano is maybe not as, so for example, uh, cat is an alternative. So here we can see that cat is installed. Uh, and I can use cat, which is cat nation, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what I want to do is I'm going to install Nano. So this is a little later on, but uh, this happens all the time. Oh, does this mean you're gonna go out on the internet and find Nano and put it on the machine? Even better. So because Ubuntu is built on Debian, Debian has a system of repositories, these libraries that all of the Debian uh, distributions share 
so that I can say, I would have expected Nano to be on this standard boilerplate, but maybe they gave like a really stripped down boilerplate because I'm using the emulator. Uh, so I'm gonna use something called apt-get. So we'll look at man apt-get. So apt-get is a, a package handling utility using the command line interface. Um, it will download packages. Uh, so it uses a library, has a front end, a back end. Here's how to update. You can upgrade. Uh, has all these functions, what to do. We're not going to go through all of it. But we see one of those functions, install. Install is done by one of these four packages. All right. So I already know how Nano this works. There's also, I'm going to introduce something a little maybe ahead of where I would have done. So the computer, the system is meant to protect itself. So I'm going to first run this command. Uh, just as this regular user, and I probably won't have permission. And then mm -hmm. I'll run this as a super user, um, right. or sudo, which is super do, uh, super user do. So I'm going to try apt get. I want you to install something, and that's going to be nano. And so here's the message I got. It's unable to open, permission denied. You're in an administrative, it's trying to put it into var library package. So it's trying to download the package and put it there. It can't. Are you I, root? I so am question. I the root user? Yep. So is it, if it's, is it looking for this on your hard drive or did it actually reach out onto the internet? Yeah. So what it's, well, it probably, I, I don't know if it pinged the internet yet, but it is, that is the, its intent is to ping the internet. So it has an internal directory for where the, uh, listing of the Debian packages are yeah. and those packages, um, it checks them. So I'm going to say, let's do it as a super user. Sudo. Sudo. Um, and so the super user now does the same thing. apt get install yeah. nano. And so it really protect you. So whenever you use super user, you know, you're doing something a little dangerous. And so now it's gone and you can see it's reading, uh, the packaging. It found it, it's reached the internet, it's downloading its package and all dependencies. So it will check to see what needs to be run with that. And now you have, uh, now we have Nano. And you just added that function to your Linux machine. That is now a function that this machine has that it previously did not have. Got so it. if I go to man and I go to Nano, so every one of these commands will have a manual page. So now I can yeah. read about uh, Nano. So this is Nano. It's a small, free, friendly editor, uh, which aims to replace Pico, uh, blah, blah, blah. So like I said, there's this battle about all the editors. Um, um, we are going to, so I wanted to edit my blank test document. And I'm going to go Nano, not Mano, <laughs> Nano, uh, and then test. And I can use tab to complete. Okay. And so here we go. Via nano, the text file. Yeah. And now you're adding text, and you're going to yep. save it. All right, so when you're done, what do you do to get it in? Yep, so now what I'm going to do, so this uses commands. You can see those are prompted along the bottom. Some of the other ones don't give you the prompt, which is why I encourage beginners to use this one. So to exit, I'm going to hit Control and X. And it says, you've modified the buffer. What they're really saying is the file. So uh, it, because it's in temporary memory until I have committed it. Yeah. So uh, answering no will destroy. Um, so it's really, do you want to save changes? The answer is why. Um, file to write it to. We're going to write it to test, the one that we'd started. I hit enter. So now let's list what's going on here. Um, we can see we soft text. Oh, we actually want the. Uh, well, yeah, there you are, 48, I'm going to say human, um, but it's like 48 bytes. So we have a very small text file uh, that I have modified, uh, and I can see it with other things. So, for example, if I just want to read something quickly, a lot of times I'll do cat, um, and it will just show you that text right in line. The other one, which is really useful, is called tail. This is good for log files, and it only shows you the tail end of the file. Now, for this, it will show you uh, the whole file because it's short. 
But if you're looking at a door log, for example, for Makehaven of thousands and thousands of entries, you only want to see the last, you want to start at the bottom of the file. So you type tail and then you write. So there's these are lots of ways to uh, work with text. And each of these has many modifiers that you can um, that you can do. So, I mean, I have a lot more to cover, um, but mm. I think this might be a good time for you guys to uh, start following along if that's something you're excited about. Uh, one, I'll show you one other thing, and that's how to make a directory. So let's make a um, an example directory. So that's make dir and example. Okay, so it doesn't give you any feedback other than when we list, we're gonna see you have uh, an example directory. And in fact, I'll show you one other move just uh, so we have things to practice. I'm gonna move test. So if I go to man MV, so M MV is to move, right? And so it says the synopsis, any options, your source and your destination. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's go back and I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna say move and we're gonna move test and we're gonna move it into example. And I'm using the tab to complete. So now let's see if it did it. Okay, so we see a directory called example. We're gonna CD into that example directory and there's our test. All right, so do you think, um, are you guys interested in trying to uh, follow along and do these things? Or would you rather I continue to kind of walk through some more commands and expose you by showing? What, what, what is it doing or showing sound better to you right now? Showing. Yeah, yeah right now I'm. More I'll, showing? I'll, okay. I'll slow everybody down. If I do. <laughs> How about a list of all the commands that uh, you went over so far? Just. Uh... Yeah, so that is in a Google Doc. And that is at, uh, I could add it to the text file. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go nano. Oh, I just did nano without it. But it's um, uh, makehaven.org slash Linux. And uh, commands. So there's so much more uh, in the system. Yeah. So, so these, uh, these are the commands that you've gone over on this video that you're yep. making now. And a lot more, because this is from some other classes. Um, mm. This will help me out a lot, by the way. I'm seeing things. Then, I need to play with it. And then this is, uh, you know, command list. It's snowing. Uh, uh, and let me, uh, all right, what, one, um, one thing that I have to do a whole bunch over yeah. on uh, the radio Ubuntu machine is we have a number of files there that I need to download into those uh, memory chips for the Raspbian systems or for the uh, retro Pi systems. And um, so I've done it a few times already, but I totally forgot what I had. I have to, I've made notes. I have to go back and look it up. What is it you're trying to, I didn't quite get, you have to do what? So I want to, um, we've got a number of files on the, um, the copying files Ubuntu machine that need to be uh, copied onto uh, one of those 32 gigabyte chips for the Raspbian uh, systems, those five computers that we put together. Yeah. So I, so, I want to be able to make those chips. Yeah. Um, I am going to, I'm, I think that like that's more advanced than I can handle. I mean, that's really a specific thing. Uh, I'm going to continue to sort of right. move along. Um, right. So just for the uh, pseudo. So let me. Um, uh, one question. Yeah. You, you, uh, so when you use the pseudo command, it you had higher permissions, but you didn't have to use a password of any kind for. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's because this was spun up as just like a quick uh, emulator. Okay. Uh, and so this user has permission to do that. But typically on an uh, installed Ubuntu system where you have set up a password particular to your, um, your system, 
you, you are right. going to have to it'll prompt you every time you sudo to enter your administrator password. That's right. a good okay. observation. Dreams to make. Well, don't tell people your administrator password. Um, <laughs> so just so you know, you can change ownership. So uh, there's changing ownership and changing permissions. Uh, maybe we'll do that on our, uh, our test file here. Um, so we, we have this test file and it is, uh, it's currently not executable. Uh, I am going to, uh, and it's not owned. We can make it owned by root just so that's another, uh, that's another user. So this is definitely going to be a sudo command. And ch own is one way that we uh, we change it. And that's also going to be in a manual. Um, so you can see how the manual works. But I'm going to say uh, the, the owner should be root. And we'll leave it. Let's see if it will just take. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't tried that yet. And now we're going to specify which file. OK, so root nothing is not a thing because it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to keep it with calbox. All right, so no, not getting an error message is typically uh, an example of it working. Uh, so one. So one tip that you're seeing, I can move backwards through my commands by pressing the up key. So to save time, I'm pressing the up key three times because I just listed, and it will relist. So you don't have to retype things all the time. You can use the up and down keys to navigate through your previous commands. Um, you can see now that the user associated with test.txt has been changed to root. Uh, I can also change the permissions from read, read, write. Uh, so the uh, permission is ch, uh, so we're going to go sudo ch mod. Uh, and then this can get a little complicated. So I'm going to try and use, I normally use the numeric uh, setup, oh, code, uh, which octal is, code. Number. what was that? It's an octal number, zero to eight. Yeah, so uh, there's a key, but we'll, we'll try using the, um, so I'll try and give it uh, execute, read, write, uh, execute. Mm. No, we'll, we'll do dash, uh, read, write, dash, uh, yeah, read, dash, dash. All right, we're going to do that to text. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the way I'm normally doing it, um, which is with letters or numbers. So uh, 557. So that's going to give a more restrictive permission to the first two and seven to the last one, which is the any user, uh, which is kind of dangerous. But uh, you'll see that it'll be a good example for change. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, now you can see, and it's it's highlighted green to kind of be like, oh, hey, you've just you've green lighted. Any user can change that. So now, uh, the mm. top of the tree backwards, you can uh, you can read it, uh, you can execute and read it, and uh, or yeah, read and execute, read and execute, and you read, write, execute at the very base level, which yeah. is not ideal if you have a web server because you're going to get owned. They're going to inject yeah. some script there. And then they're going to use that script to do all sorts of other things. Um, JR, I just want to make sure you're aware of the time. If people are available to hang out past the end time, that's yeah. cool. I just wanted to make sure that everyone was good. Yeah, so I, um, I did a little check-in earlier for if we wanted to jump over to um, to kind of like the follow. It sounded like folks still wanted to to have some demonstration. Is that is that still true, even though time's running long, guys? I'm I'm good. I'm okay with whatever you want to do. All right. So I'll still I'll keep going for a little bit, but at some point I'll cut it off because there's a um, there's a deep well of knowledge that we could go go down here. Yeah. 
Um, and we can always go back and watch this on YouTube, right? Yep, so this is gonna be saved. I think like I'll do some other ones of these as well. I mean, we've gotta figure out how to do it. I'd like to get some other instructors um, as, mm. as well to, to help. But I think this is this really is a fundamental skill uh, working with computers because mm -hmm. for Linux. So, all right, Kate, thanks. Uh, I mean, you can jump out at any point. I think we're we're fine. I'll I'll just do this till we kind of come to a natural end. Um, so don't feel don't feel tied in. Um, one thing that you'll find with uh, with these systems is a lot of times with the web server things will be bogged down and you don't know what's going on and you don't know what's running. So to see what sort of processes are running outside of the file system, there is a command called top. And so you can see here, uh, this is your dashboard telling you what is going on. And I might zoom out a little bit just to, to get the full screen here. Um, now in that document I shared, there's a description of what top has going on. So this says how long it's been running for because I started it yesterday. Uh, there's one user in there. Uh, this is the load average over three different time periods. So like in the last you know 30 seconds, the last five minutes, and the last 10 minutes, how much of the CPU as a percentage is being used? We're not even touching this thing. I mean, we're, we're barely doing anything. Um, there's 25 tasks running. What are the states of them? How much memory is filled? And then you have a dropdown of uh, process ID. So this is the ID of each process, the user who's running it. Um, there's some other things that are described in there, the memory it's using, uh, and then what the name of it is essentially, and the amount of time it's taking to run. So this is a really nice way to get like a quick, uh, a quick overview of what's going on in your computer um, and what processes are running. It's like Control-Alt-Delete. Um, the uh, I'm just jumping around. Oh, I wanted to show you. Um, I'm going to do apt get again. And so I wanted to do something where we pull down a. Let's see if I can get this, see if this is in the directory. I wanted to pull down an image from the internet. So what I'm downloading is something called AView. And AView is something that will reinterpret any image into ANSI art. Uh, because Terminal doesn't show you a graphical interface, you can actually use something called like uh, Xorg or X something, uh, but it will uh, allow you to see a terminal view um, and, and get it. So now I'm going to go to the internet and get some kind of uh, Haven, make Haven robot images. So. These are what he did here. This is what's going on inside the Mac right now. Just gave the Mac some Linux commands to tell me what's going on. Yeah. We can yeah. talk about it more okay. later. So yeah, so now I'm going to say, I'm going to use a command called wget. Uh, so this will actually pull a file from the World Wide Web. Um, so I'm just using wget, then I'm, whoa, okay. <laughs> well, I copied, I copied a folder, a file, file name from Google, but apparently I got a heck of a file name. Uh, I'm going to find one that doesn't have such a long, uh, let me see. Let me, uh, just, uh, I'm just going to look something robot. Any old picture of a robot. Okay, here's a picture of a robot. Um, so one thing, when that started going crazy, uh, I bailed out of it with Control C, which is the command to kill something right away. Um, all right. This one looks has a more reasonable file size. Uh, so I'm now going to say W get. World Wide Web get, and there's the file. All right, let's, oh, there, it's, it's doing it. Okay, so it says it got 100%. Um, let's see. 
All right, so we have the thing. It's kind of got a weird file name, but uh, there it is. Now I'm going to try and use uh, the A view, which uh, we could read the manual, but I uh, it has a sub thing called ANSI view, which I was using Barcade. But now I'm going to use, because that's a funky name, I'm just going to use 27 tab. There it goes. Failed to convert file mm. format to, OK. Uh, probably because the file I downloaded was weird. Um, so you were is, trying to convert it to readable text? Well, yeah. So, uh, so I could just find a PNG. It's Oh, a, a visible picture. Yeah. So I'll, 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 I'll jump over to Makehaven. I should have. Uh, I didn't plan. We've sort of gone off script. Yeah. So uh, that this is where you get into trouble, but um, I'm gonna open it. copy image address. I'll just try another one. W get. Oh, SVG. I don't want an SVG. I want a picture of. Three. Uh, copy image address. And now we're just getting everything from the internet. Uh, JPEG. All right, JPEG is a more standard image type. Yeah. Uh, now, and this is called Fab Logo, Fab Lab Logo, failed to convert. Okay, so I'm going to stop barking up this tree because I'm going to have to read the, um, uh, the, the manual for this. Uh, Were you trying to bring a picture to the screen? Uh, yeah. But when is so it, it's more just like a razzle-dazzle thing. I was going to mm -hmm. do it. I was going to convert all of the... Um, the image into characters, so it looks like uh, it looks like an approximation of the image in terminal. Yeah. Ah. So it's just like, as if you typed it with a typewriter, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like it's a fun thing to do, but not necessarily. Um, it's a it's a, a representation yeah. of a picture in ASCII characters. Yeah. So well. I'll, I'll play around. I'll find an image that works for it later yeah, and play around with it. Uh, or you guys can do that as homework. Is it's download this, look at the command, and try and get it going. I had it going earlier, just um, create. I haven't done it. So another interesting one is to see who else is on the server with you. So if you type who, uh, I can see who's on the server. And there's only one user. That's me, Calibox. Because mm. um, a lot of time with Linux, you are operating a server that is remote to you. Um, and you can see there's my IP number and, and what's going on that way. Um, oh. W will also give me um, information about those users and who's logged in. Um, so we did make directory. We did sudo. We moved around um, BI. Uh, oh, there's a. Another one version of top called HTOP. We don't have HTOP. So what do we do? What do we do that we don't have HTOP, guys? HTOP. You get it. How do I get it? Yep. Uh, What's the first part of getting it? GET. Yep. Uh, well, Sudo. what what kind of user? Yep. Sudo. And oh, then yeah. there is the software that goes to get it that's from Debian, right? Do you remember what that's called? Yeah. Yep. And what are we telling App Get to do? It's an application. But what do, what do we want App Get to do? What's the command we're giving it? Download it. Install. Install. And now we're going to try and install HTOP. All right. So now it goes and checks the repository for HTOP. And now I can just run HTOP. There you go. And, and so this is like another version of top that some people like better. Uh, it's fancier, uh, has some other other commands there. Um, so I go to that. Um, that's, like a, that's a static picture of all the threads that are running simultaneously on this processor, right? Yeah, it's not static, it's dynamic, it'll change. So Ooh. if you were watching it, we will. it'll continue to be updated? Yeah, I mean, there's just not much going on in this computer right now. But um, that, that data would be changing. 
this data should change. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, you can see the time changing. I mean, that's that's the most action that's happening because we're just not doing anything. But mm. it, um, yeah, so that's dynamic. Um, so another one is sometimes processes will get stuck. So you can do PS. Um, so that will tell you what another way to look at what processes are there or processes have a hierarchy. So you can do PS tree. Oh, come on. Yeah. Uh, right. And so Ooh. PS tree uh, shows you the hierarchy of these processes. And then we should really, um, so if we go man PS tree, I think there's a way to show the process IDs because what happens is if you have a problem, sometimes you need to specify things by process ID. Um, that's the PID that you see in the front. Now that's getting advanced, but just sort of to give you the, the context of that's, uh, that's how this whole thing works. There's you know, there's files and there's processes that are actively um, in the CPU clock. They're being, they're each getting time on that CPU clock and they, uh, they live in a hierarchy. Uh, so the thing that we're in right now is bash, right? And so you can actually mm -hmm. see that uh, inside the overall system, uh, there's SSD so that it's, you know, running it from the hard drive. I don't know why there's these multiple levels of it, but mm -hmm. then you have bash which is the entire interface we're working in. Um, terminal is called bash. And inside of bash, it ran PS tree at the time we were looking at the PS tree, which mm. actually makes sense. Um, and then there's not a whole lot else running on the whole system. Um, so bash is the, the terminal, command line terminal. Yeah. So uh -huh. like a lot of people call it like bash scripting because yeah. you, can, you can write scripts and other things uh, inside of here. Okay. Um, so one other, let me, uh, so what do we got in here? We got, we got some other things, right? A way to find stuff is grep. So yeah. grep, uh, and then I can say light. No, it's not going to work. Hmm. Why, what's, what's, why is it not grepping? Um, Maybe I have to grep the, I have to say the, uh, so I'm going to kill that because it got stuck. I'm going to man grep. Mm. Uh, and so options, pattern, file. So maybe uh, maybe it was I had to specify. Those are the, all the variations of the commands. You're watching yeah. it. So. Yeah. So, so, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another technique, which is called pipe. So piping is where you hand one command off to the, the other. So if we, we're listing here, and I want to list, and I say, what do I want to list? So I pipe it, that's going to be hand off. And I'm going to say grep, which is to search for something. And I think if I type test, it will only pull up things that have the word test in it. Let's see if that works. There it is. Um, so now the results are, it's highlighted in red and it's saying test. Um, now you can do that. Uh, let's let's go back to something even crazier. Um, we'll go back to root because that's going to have like a bunch of stuff, right? So go back to the very root of the file system. Go into a directory that probably has a lot of things. Bin maybe. All right, a lot of things. So now we're going to ls and we're going to pipe and we're just going to ask it for things that have dir in it Oop. no it's not dir i want to go grep dir grep dir so now you've seen the ls so we can modify the ls as well so details and we've thrown it over to grep which is going to narrow it down to just things that have matching numbers so rather than just listing you are listing very specific uh, things that you want. Does that make sense? Yeah, I wouldn't know uh, why. I, I, I think you're uh, you're searching a bunch of files in a directory for uh, all yeah. files that contain this thing. That might Ex want exactly, and and you can even search subdirectories. You'd search your whole system. It might take time. Grep is the search, uh, the method of search. And not search only can it search Ira. within an, it's with it. Yep. 
it's very powerful. I, I had a word processor for a while I used on a Mac that had all the features of grep in it. It was great. You can have variable characters and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, grep searches named output files for lines containing a matching pattern um, given search input. And then you have lots of options for grep for uh, logic that you can use to make sure that you're getting exactly what you want. And I think grep is one of those things, if you take a little time to get to know it, uh, you can use it in a very powerful way. Um, it's not the only way to do things. With all Linux things, there's also a find, for example, um, man find. I find grep more useful, but find is fi good for finding a file system directory stuff. Uh, it's a little faster in my experience, mm. um, but you can find things within your system with find. Okay, I'm getting ready to um, to be totally overloaded. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, what I would say, so that's a good point to be at. Uh, my main objective was to have you understand how to navigate, right? How to change directories, make directories, create a create file, file, move up and move down. If you can do that, you can do a lot with exploring one of these virtual systems online. You can w get some things from online, you some text files, so you can pull from external resources and you can mess around with them in there. Uh, at a later date, what I'll show you how to do is how to SSH. Um, that's a secure protocol for being able to access the terminal of a remote computer. And so now, once you have that ability, you could be logging into the computers at Makehaven from your at home accessing that terminal exactly like it was on your terminal and you are very empowered at that point to, mm. to do all sorts of things uh, that's exactly what i do when i work on web servers is i am logging in remotely i am troubleshooting why is this file you know why what's overloaded is this their disk space here so you can do all the manipulations you can do through a regular interface uh remotely question yeah so if I left the um, the radio uh, Ubuntu machine turned on, I should be able to log into it from here and if, then so, maybe burn some chips for the Raspbian system here by getting the data files that are there? Correct. Uh, there are a couple of conditions. So you'd have to set your Ubuntu up in order to receive that uh, thing. We'd have to po punch a hole in the firewall uh, but yeah, you you physically can do it. Uh, we just have to do a little configuration to make sure it's it's ready to receive that. Uh, okay. We have protections in place so that random people don't do that. Um, One of the things that I want to be able to do is I want to make a uh, backup hard drive of the radio Ubuntu system. So uh, would you be able to do that? Do you know how to do that? Uh, a backup of the Ubuntu system? I mean, I, I probably would, I would probably read, it's not something I do all the time. I tend to, the paradigm now is to cloud store all of your user files and you your system is disposable. So you don't normally back up a system anymore because I can pull down and spin up a new version of that system so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is people generally do something called containerization. So uh, it used to be that systems were all one system but now what you can do is you can segregate that you have your operating system and that can be swapped out. You have your subsystem where your files and everything are handled, and then you have your user data. And so everything, all the user data can live in containers and you can swap this stuff out without impacting this. You can swap containers and rebuild containers. And so it's uh, if one part of a system crashes, the whole system doesn't crash, only that container crashes and you oh. can restart that container. So I gotta know how to do all that. Yeah. So for example, in Makehaven, we have one master system server that's virtualized. So you have a real computer running a virtual computer. Inside that virtual computer is a container system called Docker. And Docker is running a different subsystem container for each machine at Makehaven. So even if the server, the virtual server running the table saw dies, it doesn't impact the jointer. And so I can restart or rebuild those individual containers without having to redo the system. So it kind of changes the function of a backup. 
Uh, mm. What you really want to do is you want to set up a system that can rebuild itself. And so you save, you back up user data and you build containers and scripts that rebuild containers for systems. That's the, that's the cool way to be now. Mm. So are you the official systems administrator at uh, Makehaven? Uh, I guess, I, you know, I have the keys. <laughs> I don't have the, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and as much as I'm maybe like a couple of steps ahead on my journey for learning this, then you guys feel you are right now. Uh, I am 10 steps behind Evan, you know, right. I have a bunch of steps behind a bunch of people at Makehaven. So uh, yeah. there are, um, I can do a lot, but I also, I'm learning a lot. Yeah, we're all on the learning curve, JR. Oh, yeah. And but a lot of it comes are, there's, together. Wherever yeah. we are, there's somebody who's faster. Yeah. So I, I do think this is a good time to stop because we've gone an hour and a half. Um, okay. You guys have gotten the basics of how some of the stuff works. You have something to play with. I'd encourage you to play with the code anywhere and uh, follow the instructions at makehaven.org slash Linux, because I wrote all of these out and have examples, and you should be able to go through and mm. uh, figure it out. Uh, and and one, from there, we can jump forward. Yep. Can ask you just one general question. Um, so is I just, the navigation, the, the, the order, you have a path name, the hierarchy, each level is separated by a forward slash. So it's like user slash yep. my first folder slash, and it goes down and down. Yeah. So sometimes a path name has a backslash in it instead of a forward slash, and I can't remember what that means. Do you, yeah. Um, do you I know? I think I'm not exactly sure. So I, I'd have to. Mm -hmm. I they could be escaping some characters. Like there's some. Uh, there, there's like special characters that get used in certain ways, and sometimes mm -hmm. you're using a string key. Uh, so slashes yeah. are often used, uh, often a slash or something else. Uh, I'd mm. have to look at the context, um, but yeah, I'm mm. not. It, that's, I'm not. Uh, I know I've run into it. And I just can't remember yeah. what it meant. But uh, yeah. anyway, it, it, it might mean different yeah. things in different situations. Um, okay. But Google's your friend, so yeah. doing doing okay. searches. So uh, Kate reminded me to please fill out your evaluation. Okay. Um, and then also, it's in the chat there. Also, tell us what other virtual workshops you would like to see. Um, those are that is helpful to us. Quick question. Yep. So when you're um, you're on a, a Linux system of some distribution of sorts, and you got the, your terminal command line, um, and you're doing all kinds of stuff, the system is recording everything you've done, right? And so you can go back and look at the history of uh, well, what has been done? Uh, what would you What would you call that command if you were to create that command? I don't know. Oh, I would I, say uh, go back in time. <laughs> well, it's actually called history. History. So, yeah. uh, it looks like uh, it, my container stopped. Oh, it's limited <laughs> to two hours per day. All right, we'll talk right. more about it later. Yeah. So if you yeah if you type history, it will tell you what you've typed. And you can scroll up and down and go back in time and see what. Exactly. Very useful for diagnosing, um, especially when you go back to a server that you haven't touched in a while and you type history and you can see, oh, yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, OK. And you can also copy and paste from it. And uh, here's the commands I yep. use to do this. I'm going to do copy and paste yep. them again to do it again. Yep, exactly. All right. Good. All right, guys. Well, I think in the interest of. Um, Moving forward, uh, I'm gonna have you guys uh, do the evaluation. So makehaven slash evaluation. Uh, and then Kate shared a Google form in the chat um, yeah. that you I should grab before you leave for any other feedback. I would love to do it, but I wouldn't know how to get to it at this point. Do, do the evaluation? Yeah. So uh, makehaven.org slash evaluation or in the okay. chat? Are you in the chat? There's a link in the chat window. Yeah. Go in the chat. Let me see if I can find my way. So I'm going to stop the recording. Here, this one, five yes, or six. Yes. 